All right, welcome back. Um, now we're going to move on a little bit from just doing some icons and some simple pop-ups. We're going to start working with the kind of data that you will typically be using if you're doing anything more than a very, very simple project. Uh, a lot of data online has come down to using GeoJSONs, and that is just a format of a JSON, um, as we saw in a little bit when I talked about data. Uh, it's just a format of a JSON, an object, that contains geographic information and is standardized. So you're going to be using these and luckily Leaflet has some easy ways to manage them. And since you're running into them, they are styled and they're kind of put on the map in just a slightly different way than normal uh, markers and shapes. So I thought we should go over them right away. All right, so one nice thing about GeoJSONs is they're quite efficient in terms of um, reducing, you know, like not only standardizing, data across the internet, which makes you know moving data around a lot more efficient, but also in their structure, they don't have a lot of extra um, fat in them. They do have a little bit, for instance, there's a lot of times there's people will attach a lot of properties to different types of um, geographic data, and that can make them really large. But in general, these are stored in a pretty simple and pretty uh, efficient way. In Leaflet, you're going to be adding GeoJSONs, and they're going to essentially be layers. Like each GeoJSON is going to be a different piece of a different a different layer that you can add and remove from the map quite easily. Um, you can style them individually. You can even style the features inside of each GeoJSON uh, individually, depending on its properties, or depending on some other thing that you set up. But almost always, that's depending on its properties. Um, and last, you can also attach things like pop-ups. Uh, you can make sure there's markers. You can just do all the normal things you'd hope you could do with other mapping things when it comes to working with GeoJSONs. OK, so I just have it as an empty map right now. We're just going to add some GeoJSON data, and then we're going to go from there. So to make some GeoJSON data, just for fun, let's go to GeoJSON.io. Empty out if you have any cache there um, with saved things. And let's just draw a GeoJSON in the area where you made the map. So we can take a line, just draw it around a little, maybe put a marker, put another marker, another one, and another one, and a polygon. OK, so that's cool. And here's the GeoJSON right here. What we're going to do first is just Control-A, Control-C, copy all of that. And we're just going to put it right as a variable into the map. So right after. Um, you can see I got rid of some of our extra icon stuff. We're not going to use that again right now, but we are going to run into it later. I'm going to put var geojson equals, and then just paste that. And it's a big, ugly object that kind of, it's going to be long, um, made my page fairly long. So we can, we can fix that up later. But there we are. And why don't we add this? So in order to add this with the leaflet, we're going to go um, l.geojson. Now we're going to pass it to GeoJSON, and we're going to say add to map. Looks pretty straightforward. Oops, that's not the right one. Boom, and there we are. There's our GeoJSON. So you can see how easy it is to get across geographic data with that. There was no looping needed, no nothing. I just one thing instantly. Obviously, this looks fine, I guess, um, but it looks really basic too, and we probably want to make this a lot prettier. First of all, I don't really like having a GeoJSON right in here. Um, I would tend to, you tend to call these with some kind of call or an external AJAX call, but we're not up on a server and I don't want to run into some little errors or have you set up a server. Up is go to remove line breaks or a similar tool. Remove them all. Make sure you select none and no paragraph. Remove them all and just paste again. And now it's just a few lines long, so it's actually a little more comprehensible. Again, I would probably want to call this from an external file, and we are going to set that up in later episodes, but at this point, we're just focusing on the GeoJSON itself and styling it. <clears throat> so now we saw how to add options. Uh, for instance, we have this options thing here when we add our tile layer, or this options thing here when we create our map. But we can also add options to GeoJSON, and those options are a little more complicated. They're not just like style and that kind of thing, because since with the GeoJSON we have multiple objects, there's no way that we can guarantee that they all need to be styled the same. For instance, those points, 
the markers are going to obviously have a different style than the polygon. They're just completely different types of shapes. So one thing we can do is we can say style, and then we actually give it a function that's going to take the feature. And that is just given to us by leaflet. And with that, we will return a style object that's typical to leaflet. So for instance, um, when it comes to the polygons, we saw that you can give them a color or fill or um, fill opacity and those kind of things. So let's just make the color here uh, black. Oh, I'll give that a string. So this is just like as if the inside of this was actually one of these features and you're giving it options. Okay, let's reload that. There we go, the color turned black. Um, so, but it didn't affect the markers because the markers don't have a color. So now if I was to say, okay, color zero, and maybe we say icon, black icon, is that gonna work? Let's see if that works. No, it just breaks it. And so, oh, sorry, actually, let's actually see if that works. No, we can see it doesn't actually change the icons. Okay, so maybe this is just, uh, you can, you can f see that this is more uh, for shape geometries rather than for a specific uh, point or something. There's actually another function we're going to use to add an icon. But let's keep going with this a little bit, and we're just going to um, change the, um, what was it, weight to 0.5, because I like that being a little thinner. It's a little nicer. And uh, that's okay. That, that pretty much works for now. And now what we can do is add another function here. So we can say um, point to layer, okay, feature layer. And this is another function like what we um, just saw. So why don't we go to leaflet and just we can look a little at these um, functions. So here's the GeoJSON, and here's the GeoJSON object. And you can see it has this options in the same way we put it with the style, and it's returning a color, same way we did. You can also bind a pop-up. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend doing this uh, every time unless you're absolutely sure that you want every object on your GeoJSON data to have a pop-up. Uh, this will just automatically apply it to every single um, feature that you, you add, every part, every geographic thing that you add to it. Uh, but it can be a good move. And it's nice because you actually get access to your GeoJSON in the bind pop-up. You can see it passes the layer, and in the layer, are some properties. We're going to do this a little more when we add our pop-up. We're going to do it a little differently. So here's the JSON, JSON options, and here's some options. Point to layer, and you can see here uh, how the points become layers. So this is a good one to add a marker in. And if we add a marker, we can add marker options. Okay. Style, we already saw. This is for path options, and for po so for polygons and lines. That's what style is for. On each feature, that is just a useful one that can be used for um, doing things uh, on, on every feature regardless of whether it is a point or a line or a polygon. So here it says it's useful for attaching events and pop-ups. So for instance, pop-ups that you might want on certain um, features but not on others, you can filter them using the properties that are given to you from your GeoJSON. And let's just remember our GeoJSON's properties are uh, editable. So if we, do, we had a JSON, we could add properties here, like size or um, demographic information. Whatever we want, whatever we need in order to actually be filtering our information properly is going to be given to us. And then there's some filter ones, which isn't quite as um, commonly used that you're going to need, and a bunch of events and different things that we're going to be going over in the future. But why don't we try using point to layer um, and we'll also use on each feature to add pop-ups since we've gone through these before. So this mentioned, let's see, returning a marker. So, okay, let's do that since we only have markers. We could also make them circles if we wanted or something. Um, now it just says lat long, so where is that? So it says here point to layer actually gives us a GeoJSON point and lat long. Okay, so we have to make sure we actually copy that correctly. So it's actually giving us the GeoJSON um, that's marked as having a, that's marked as being a point. You can see right here, this one is called a point, and it's just got two coordinates, um, whereas the others might be called a line string, as we see here, or a polygon. 
So if it's a point, it's going to run through this point to layer. In this case, we're going to give it an icon of our black icon. And let's just see how that goes. Oh, do we? Did I put something wrong in here? Let's see. What is our unexpected token? Oh, it's not an object. That's right. It's just a. We're just returning the marker directly. My bad. Okay. So we just save it like that and reload. And there we go. We have our markers. And obviously they are a little large. We could change the size in monitoring our size here. But you get the idea. So let's add some pop ups now. Um, let's only add them on the markers. So we're going to do an on each feature. Okay. And then we're going to say, what, what? let's see. What do we get from here? On each feature, feature layer. So the default is to do nothing. So that means there's not going to be any pop-up attached by default. And remember, we could add bind pop-up here and do like it said in that upper leaflet example right here. But we're going to do it conditionally instead. So I'm going to say if um, feature dot uh, geometry dot type equals point, right? I'm making them a point. Then I want it to do something. So we're not going to be actually returning anything here. And again, this is a little bit, a um, little bit silly because we could probably attach a pop-up in this point to layer instead. But I just want to illustrate how this works. That that's the real point here. Okay, so if we're going to do that, then we can make a pop-up. So okay, where's our pop-up at? Okay, let's make a pop-up in um, a proper way again. Here we are. Let's make this. We're going to just create a pop-up right early on. Just call it that. And we're going to say on each feature um, that if the feature is clicked, we want the pop-up to show. So we're going to attach some event to that. Now we're just going to bind a pop-up to it. So we're going to say bind pop-up. And we're going to say feature. No, we're just going to say Hello, since we don't have any information in the actual thing. And there we go. We can see hello got bound to those, but there is no pop-ups on the other objects. There we go. So that's fairly easy to do. Now, if we had some information, we could pass it in here and it would say something about this. For instance, we could probably give it um, the feature.geometry.coordinates, and then we'd see that um, well, we just have to make them readable because they're an array. But uh, there you go. Now you can see that they are slightly different. <laughs> That's very not fun to read. But you can see that they, they do show up. So that's a very basic uh, approach to GeoJSONs. And in the next section, what we're going to do is work on something a little quicker, a little uh, different than this, and it's bounds. Uh, so we're going to help a lot uh, in, in making our maps really usable. So. Let's uh, move into that, and we will be coming back to GeoJSONs a lot and adding and hiding them as different layers um, when we move on to our filtering section.